Hi, Kevin here. I'm really enjoying the recipes that viewers have sent in. Today we're going to fix a cake that was submitted by Helen. Now Helen said that her mother used to make this cake and based on the list of ingredients, I'm guessing that that was in either the 1960s or early 1970s. So the first thing you need to do is preheat the oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit and then either grease and flour a 9 by 13 baking dish or easier spray the dish with baking spray. Baking spray contains flour. All right let's get started. All right for the cake batter you'll need this Duncan Hines Lemon Supreme Cake Mix. Now this is a 15.25 ounce package. These used to be 18.25 ounces, but somewhere along the lines the size shrunk. But it's supposed to be perfectly good for a 9 by 13 cake. We're going to put this in a mixing bowl and then add Where's one cup of water, one third cup of vegetable oil, and three large eggs. And then I'm going to beat the batter just with my handheld electric beaters. And I'm going to do this at low speed at first just to moisten the cake mixture and then I'll beat this for two minutes at high speed. All right, and I should tell you these beaters are like probably 30 years old. I've had them for a really long time and 30 years is probably the last time I made a cake using a cake mix. Otherwise, I always make my cakes from scratch. All right, let me fetch the baking dish. And then in goes the batter. Yeah, I think this is enough batter for a 9 by 13 pan. And again, my oven has preheated to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. We're going to get all of this batter out of here because I don't like to waste ingredients. All right. Wipe my hands. Okay, and then this is going into the preheated oven until the cake puffs and a toothpick inserted in the search inserted in the center of the cake comes out clean. That's going to take from 21 to 26 minutes. So we'll come back and I'll show you the next step. All right, here's the cake all baked and beautiful. I'm going to let it cool on a wire rack for 15 minutes and then I'll show you the next step. All right, the cake has almost finished cooling for 15 minutes, so now the next step, according to Helen's mother, is to make some jello. So, what I have here is a three ounce box of strawberry jello. I'm going to add this to one cup of boiling water and then I'm going to stir this just until the jello dissolves. This is going to take about two minutes so I will come right back. Okay, we're all mixed here. So now I'm going to add a half cup of cold water. Mix this in briefly. Okay, and then here's the fun part. I'm 
we're going to make holes all around this cake. I'm going to use a serving fork, but you could use a toothpick or a wooden skewer or even a chopstick. And you want to make a lot of holes. And I'll get this started and then I'll finish it off camera. All right, I think the toothpick or the wooden skewer works better than the serving fork. Serving cork, <laughs> this serving fork, not cork, was kind of tearing up the cake. So you want to make these holes really close to each other. And this is, well, Helen's mother called this an icebox cake, but I think it is also called a poke cake because you poke holes in it and then you add something. And that something in this instance is the strawberry jello. All right, I'm going to finish this and then I'll come back. All right, finished. And now I'm going to pour the jello mixture all over this cake. And of course, the jello is going to seep into the, I don't know, hundreds of little holes I've made. It's a very pretty color. And don't worry if you've scratched up the surface of the cake because it's going to be covered with um, a topping. I'm not going to tell you about the topping just yet because I want it to be a surprise. Let's just say that it's going to be a topping that is very typical of the late 1960s and early 1970s when people were really into convenience foods. Yeah, that was the time that uh, I guess women uh, started to enter or re-enter the workforce and so shortcuts were really appreciated in cooking. Shortcuts in cooking. All right, so now look at how pretty this looks. This goes into the refrigerator until the cake has completely cooled and that's going to take oh, probably an hour or two. So guess what? I will come back. Okay, we are back. The cake has thoroughly chilled. And look at this. You can see these beautiful pink streaks from the jello all through the cake. I can't wait to taste it. But first, I'm going to make the topping. Now, this is what Helen's mother said to do. All right, so you need one packet of Dream Whip. Now, I was shocked that this stuff is still available. I remember ads for Dream Whip uh, from the early 1970s, and the ads claimed that Dream Whip was half the cost and half the calories of regular whipped cream. Yum. My scissors here. So there are two packets in each box of Dream Whip. And you want to put it in a bowl that has been uh, chilling in the freezer for 30 minutes. They also need one 3.4 ounce box of vanilla instant pudding mix. Add that to the Dream Whip. And then one and a half cups of either 1% or 2% or even skim milk. Apparently you're not supposed to use whole milk uh, with Dream Whip. 
Why? I really don't know. Okay, and then I'm going to beat this until it whips. All right. Are we recording? Yes, I think so. I hope so. All right, this took about seven minutes to whip. That off of there. All right. Let me wipe this up. Neatness counts. Okay, now I'm going to top the dessert. So I'll use a spoon here. Yeah, I cannot wait to taste this. I'm going to try to limit myself to just one small piece of this cake. Okay, let me move you in a little closer. So you just spread this all over the cake and it spreads very, very easily. Yeah, this is a very 1960s or early 1970s cake. There's almost no natural ingredients in it. But it is a dessert. And in general, desserts are not particularly nutritious. That's why they're called desserts. All right. Now, I'm going to have a taste. Hang on. Yeah, you're supposed to put this cake back in the refrigerator, but I'm just anxious to try it. So I'm going to have me a piece of cake right now. Let's see if I can get this out of here. have a look. Oh, it's really beautiful. Look at that. It's like a fashion show. All right, let me grab a fork. Oh, Oh my, this is delicious. Okay, this isn't just delicious, it's ridiculously delicious, okay? And what a beautiful cake. Uh, I think the reason you use the Dream Whip instead of regular whipped cream is because if you put whipped cream on top, the cream would just deflate in the refrigerator. All right, so I'm going to finish this piece of cake and try not to have a second square of it tonight. Um, and I will post the list of ingredients in the description box below. And thank you to Helen for sharing this recipe with us. All right, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye for now.